Welcome to part two of my three-part series of the nine different types of intelligence. Now, in part one, I talked about how I think there's a huge need for us to appreciate all the different types of intelligence that we observe in other people and especially in ourselves. I think that far too often we get told that there's only one type of intelligence that's valuable and that's doing well on tests, scoring high on your SATs, having a super high IQ. Like these are what society values and how we're segmented into either intelligent or not intelligent. And that shit is all bullshit because that's not the end all, trust me. Now I've really been wanting to get back on this and, and talk about uh, three more very fascinating uh, types of intelligence. And that's what today's vlog is all about. We're gonna break down verbal linguistic, interpersonal, and naturalistic intelligence. So let's just hop right into it. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is verbal linguistic intelligence. Now to make this simple, it basically means that it's people who are very good with their words and articulating uh, thoughts and ideas. Uh, that's both written and spoken. We all have this type of intelligence, but it's, it's levels to this shit, it's levels, all right? So people that are very gifted in this area, they're obviously writers, journalists, novelists, speech writers, or even politicians. But it doesn't just stop there. There's a scientist that most people know about. Most people never hear about scientists, right? They're never popular because they don't have these kind of skills. But I wanted to talk about Neil deGrasse Tyson in this part because he kind of transcends the norm and he has the ability to articulate his thoughts and ideas. Some of the most complex uh, theories and formulas and things that's out in the cosmos and in the universe in very layman's terms where everybody can understand it. And, you know, it, it has a, he has a deep level of passion when he's delivering this information and you can tell. Um, one thing that I found very interesting about him is he was doing a Q&A and someone asked, what do I have to do to be like you? So he broke it down. He says, okay, when you say be like me, in what way? Is it knowing what I know? Is it being able to deliver a message to the public? And when he got on that, he started talking about, well, you have to start writing at a young age, start young. And that is what, you know, the, the fact that he can articulate these complex ideas and thoughts in such a simple manner is not by accident. He wasn't born with that talent. He developed it over time. And we all have the ability to get better or get good at articulating our thoughts and ideas, whether written or verbally. He's living proof of that because an astrophysicist is not typically a part of pop culture, and he is, and cheers to him for that, all right? Now, for y'all who think that you can't write that good or you're not good with words, I promise you, you can get better. And the easy way to do it is just by starting a journal. Like, first off, the benefits of that is it's private. You don't have to get past the hurdle of thousands of people hearing or reading what you're writing down. It's private. Second, I believe that we all are storytellers. We all have so many thoughts and ideas running through our heads every day. Just try writing them down and be consistent about it and I guarantee you will become better at it. All right, so third, by keeping this journal, is also a form of, of personal discovery and it's kind of like healing, you know? It's very therapeutic, trust me, and you can write down all the shit that happens to you in your life and just relive it. When you do this, it helps you, it helps you put more perspective to it and it makes things more clear. You just gotta try it, trust me on this. All right, so next thing I wanna talk about is interpersonal intelligence. Now, having a high interpersonal intelligence it means that you can relate well to other people and that you can manage your relationships very well. Interpersonal skills don't mean that you're just good at talking to people. It's a lot more to it, all right? So just think about this. Have you ever been in a conversation with someone? I have. Uh, have you ever been in a conversation with someone who just talks about themselves and just won't shut the fuck up? And it's like they don't realize how goofy it sounds with them constantly talking about themselves. I guarantee you didn't leave that uh, conversation with a, a positive view of that person. 
This has a lot to do with self-awareness or a lack thereof. So, but when you have these skills, you do genuinely care about the people that you're talking to. You will intently listen to them. A lot of times people are just waiting to start talking again, but that's not what it's about. You know, you pay it to, you do things like pay attention to their facial features, uh, expressions, I'm sorry, um, their tone of voice, body language. You gotta be aware of all of these things. You also gotta be aware of your, like, how you're delivering your message to them. Sometimes you have to turn yourself down a little bit, or you, have, you might have to match their intensity by turning shit up a little bit. You gotta be aware of your surroundings, of the people around you, and you have to have a level of empathy of the people that you're dealing with. That's part of having this type of intelligence. You, you're just very aware. You have self-awareness, you have awareness of others, and you have a high level of empathy. You know, that is huge in being successful in life. All right, so another uh, form of intelligence that I promise you guys we talk about is naturalistic intelligence. Now, this is a very unique type of intelligence and one that many people choose to develop or teach themselves. Naturalistic intelligence is the ability to understand living things and to read nature. <laughs> yeah, read nature. So at its core, naturalistic intelligence is it's really like it's people that have the ability and the desire to find patterns in chaos, organize and categorize information. People with a high degree of naturalistic intelligence may be drawn to doing shit like collecting rocks, uh, hiking, exploring, um, bird watching, you know what I mean? Boy Scouts, uh, you know, things of, of the nature type of uh, genre. People like Bear Grylls, John Muir, uh, Charles Darwin, uh, even like poets and authors like Ernest Hemingway, um, all these type of people, they exhibit a high degree of naturalistic intelligence and that served them very well. Um, so now y'all are starting to see where these different types of intelligence can benefit you in other ways. So it's not all about your SATs, okay? Now, speaking of SATs, I actually don't really give a fuck about your SAT score your GPA or your IQ or how well you could take a test. To me, those can be meaningless measurements. They are arbitrary and they're artificial categorizations that anyone can be trained to master very quickly. So I just wanted to show you guys, this is just a small portion of the, all the different levels or types of intelligence. We will get into more uh, types in later episodes. Um, I just want you guys to see that and if any of you have low SATs or mediocre IQ tests or anything like that, don't fret. That's not the end all by any means. You can have the highest fucking IQ and be socially awkward, weird, not motivated, not athletic, and are doing nothing in your life. You know what I'm saying? And accomplishing nothing but having a high score on this fucking test. And I'm gonna tell you something. I took the IQ test for the first time a few weeks ago and I did okay. However, in the beginning, I was really trying to figure it out. And once I figured it out, I just aced through it. If I do it again, I'm gonna do way better. Anybody can train, be trained to take a test and do well at it. That's not the end all to anything. You gotta be good with people. You gotta have good survival skills. You gotta be somewhat athletic, a little bit, you know what I mean, to be successful in life. So it's a lot to this whole thing of intelligence. I really wanted to bring this up because I heard, I'm hearing a lot of debates about IQs and this, that, and the third, and it's a lot more to it than an IQ test, all right? So anyway, y'all stay tuned to the uh, vlog. I'm gonna keep, we do a weekly blog every week, and I've been doing it for about six months now. I'm gonna start bringing it to you guys right here on YouTube as well. So for those who are not subscribed to my blog, and if you're not subscribed to the blog, you should, because I go way more in depth on these topics because I'm writing it out, I'm, I'm showing you guys the research and that, this, that, and the third. So the link's down below, check it out, and I'll see y'all next time.